Roger Mudfossil University, this guy is in outer space here, in the space station, which exists, so all you people that don't believe in space, please go away and leave my research alone. Now, this guy is in the space station, watch this. You've probably heard that space has a smell, maybe like burnt steak or some type of barbecue. That's true. When you come in from a spacewalk, you're surrounded by the emptiness of space. It's sort of like the opposite of air. There's nothing there at all. When you quickly repressurize the hatch and you open up the hatch and you smell, what is that lingering smell from a place that used to be exposed to space? The smell in there is, is a little bit like that trace of a smell of gunpowder or burnt steak or to me it's sort of like brimstone, like a witch. All right, the, the smell is what they call polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that are uncombusted. That's because they are being burnt off of things that are in space which are body parts and they are giving off these hydrocarbons which are aromatic polycyclic hydrocarbons in a non-oxygenated atmosphere and they become, like he said, gunpowder, metals. You know, you're going to have your metals in there because they're not being combusted. You're going to have sulfur in there because it's not being combusted. You're going to have all your same elements that are in the body, but they're going to be mixed into a, a steaky smelling mixture. All right. I have so much evidence that shows that the things in space are vaporizing body parts. And right here, if you come up to Mudfoss University, just go back to one here that's only six days ago. Asteroid Ultima Thule is explained, and it is biology. And here it is right here, and that is a tendon entesis, and we have them here on Earth, and there is another one right there. In the ground is the other side of that ball. I have all the evidence here to show exactly what I'm saying. I have mud fossils here, I, they're all DNA certified, I show the body chemistry, I show the anatomy, I show every bit about it, I show the meteorites that are coming into the atmosphere that are iron lungs because they smelt on entry, I show the blood in the iron lungs when they cut them apart and there's still blood in there, I show Comet 67P, it's mysterious features discussed life absolutely and they agree with this now they understand that it's life they don't know how to deal with these things this is what happens these are gassing off and that is a tendon entity you see that boom 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 that is what grabs into your body and holds this piece which is a stalk of tendons running up to meat that would have been here that is vaporized off and is in space somewhere this i can prove because I have the same specimens right here in my shop. Smaller. <laughs> because that one out there in space is, I think, about three miles wide. And it is the same as the tendon antithesis that I have here. So come up here and look at that stuff. Get informed to reality. Step away and, and, and focus on the things on, on Mudfoss University. You will understand what the reality of the story is. Thank you. I'm just going to leave you with this. Nibiru was the planet that apparently they claim they sent people here to mine gold to save their planet. Now why were they doing this? Their planet has an enormous elliptical orbit of 3600 years and I don't know where they are in that orbit now but at one time they were here on earth and they were mining the earth for gold and all the other things they took out, primarily gold. And what they needed for the gold was to bring it back to Nibiru where they could particulate it and put it up into their atmosphere to keep from having global warming. All right And global cooling, because when they were way out here, they would be cold and the the gold surrounding them would keep the heat in and when they were down here they would be hot and the gold around them would keep the heat out because of the sun's rays now our planet i say it's not the carbon dioxide that's heating it up it's obviously not the the magnetosphere which is way out around our our 
planet which is smashing into the ether is rubbing it so hard that it's overheating 56,000 degrees it's no other reason that this is 70 that's 56,000 it's not from having too much carbon dioxide they gotta stop and think all right Mudfossil University you want truth it's the only place you're gonna find it all right I just want to make two statements first of all I claim that if you can test the temperature out here and it is increasing or it is, is seen as increasing and they should be able to know at a, if this magnetosphere temperature has increased or not and then I would also like to say that if it is increasing and gold is the only way we could get out of this I know where the gold is and I told where the gold is and they found the gold where I said it was in the last place in Australia they found it like I don't know 160 pound nugget or something uh, Right, exactly where I said it's in the heel of the of the giant feet, way down deep. They had to go sixteen hundred feet down after the the stuff plays out. Well, it doesn't play out; it falls down to the bottom, and in the mean up above, it just fills up with silica. So there's nothing there. Well, there is. It's that's down at the bottom. It's specific gravity. And the guy said when he got down there, he just couldn't believe how much gold was there. So I don't know what they've done since then, but there was, a, I mean, literal, well, millions and millions and millions of dollars in just two chunks of gold. And then he went down there the next couple of days and took two more chunks out, another couple, few million dollars. And then after that, I don't know what they did, but they, they, were, they were pretty big smiles. So, Mud Fossil University, all I'm asking for is for people to take into account these things that we're, I'm saying. And I also have, I don't just come with nothing. I come with evidence, then I come with, it. I try to find solutions. I try to present things just like the fusion. Now let me show you that, because that's another thing that's just being ignored. And it's not right. I believe I have dozens of videos on this. It is accelerated light. That was just a standard wave that is being sucked through a venturi, which accelerates it, turns it into plasma. Now, plasma, if this, see this little tiny particle beam there? He's homing on it. Because that's all it is here. This whole thing is a, a big shock wave because these tiny particles, for some reason, own a large reason around them. And as they start to compress against themselves, they exhibit and glow, and then they are all into each other's regions, which they want to own this big region. Can't do it anymore. They're touching each other and saying, this is a problem for them. That is plasma. Now, if that happened with heavy particles where you had your protons and, and your, your cores and your, uh, you know, heavy hydrogen they use, and you were smashing the same thing, I don't see why it wouldn't create plasma. Now, if it did, if it came out on the other side, it's supposed to convert it back down. Everybody's in pieces and little bits, and they'll look for each other, and they will turn into helium. And what's left over is energy. Now, if that's possible, because this is only done within a couple of inches. This is not some big, long, huge acceleration thing running around Switzerland. I mean, this, this is in a garage. <laughs> so... Let's uh, let's let's come to reality, and they don't have to do something in Switzerland, in 16 miles around a circle or something. Here you got plasma. You've got enormous re radiation of the electromagnetic field. You see that? That's reverse EMF. You've got acceleration of light, totally not expected. You have these particles glowing here and those particles are what's known as ether they are particles being compressed by the reversing wave and displaying their unhappiness about being compressed All right? and that's what they do when they are being compressed every particle reacts the same way it glows and we have shown the particles and they are actual dipoles and I can show you this right here. This will see. This is a normal wave, normal ether. This is the accelerated particles, and the wave. These are the Higgs. Uh, I mean the bosons, Cherenkov boson particles, Higgs fields which surround that charged particle. Boom! It slams into this unrestricted space. A new particle nobody knows about. We discovered. 
the actual light particles and the actual particles spinning to the right in highly accelerated light in the boson phase until it, it comes into the Higgs field phase. So it's what it's what our CERN's looking for. So you know, and this and it's not hard to do. This is not we didn't spend all, as quite as much as CERN. So my fossil university, I somebody to get a hold of us. Was we'll, we'll let tell you what you know. Well, I don't look for any money. I don't want any fame or fortune. I this is just something that I want truth, and I don't like to be ignored when I come presenting truth and having the people that are say they're in a business of truth ignore the truth for their own self-interest in their own opinions. That's how I see it. That's, I see no other reason. And now I claim 100% victory and Mud Fossil University is the new leader in all research. Every field. And if you can dispute that, you come and talk to me. Because I have the evidence and you people are just spouting nonsense. Alright? Mud Fossil University, you want the truth of history, the truth of reality, the truth of energy, the truth of factual evidence, not some pie-in-the-sky fantasy uh, PhD, perfectly happy, deluded business. Now it's time to change the whole enchilada.